Good afternoon YouTube and welcome back to the channel and on today's episode with my 2006 GSX-R 600K6. So now in today's episode we are going to be replacing the brake master cylinder up here. Now it's a known issue in the UK, unfortunately they fail. There's been word that the seals break down inside them. In the UK, Suzuki have recalled them, but I'm going to give you the part number today in case you need to order one if you're outside of the UK but if you are in England, you can take your bike to a local dealer to get it fitted. Now, I haven't got a Suzuki dealer near me, so I've ordered it in so that I can just replace it in the garage. And essentially, if it fails, it's brake failure on the front. So far from ideal. So we're gonna get that swapped over today, show you how to drain the system, bleed the new brakes up, and I'm also going to put a new battery in the bike because the last time I was out, it was just been a little bit close to not starting. I've had it in there now for about eight years. So we'll go through that all in today's video. So this is the brake master cylinder here in the kit, which I'll show shortly, you get a replacement unit. So what we're gonna start by doing is removing the bleed nipple off of the caliper. I'm gonna use an air compressor system to draw all the fluid out from the reservoir. And then if you haven't got that, you will need to do it manually, which is a simple process of pumping the lever, holding it back, while you're holding it back, crack the nipple off and the lever will pull all the way back as the fluid drains, do the nipple back up, release the lever and pump it until the system is dry. But as I say, I'll be using a much faster method of using an air compressor with a vacuum line on it. So as mentioned, this is the replacement master cylinder from Suzuki. Essentially, it looks slightly different. You can tell pretty quickly from the original because of the shape is slightly different. And it's also a matte finish rather than a gloss, but spin that out of there one-handed. So as you can still, still produced by Nissin. New reservoir part as well, which is a nice touch, all correctly covered up. And then compared to the original, you can see that's a gloss. A shame it's not stayed gloss. That'll stress me OCD out because it won't match the passenger side, but I'd rather that than a brake system failing. So you can see the design is different as well. So we'll uh, get the old one drained out, get the new unit fitted. It also comes with some new bolts and fittings as well. So a nice little touch on say, if you're in the UK, certainly worth getting that recalled because if it fails, you lose all your front brakes, you're gonna be in big trouble. With the reservoir completely drained, you can now undo the eight millimeter holding the bracket onto the clip-on, the two eight millimeters holding the master cylinder onto the clip-on as well. But before you do that, there's a 14 mil, where well, there is on mine, underneath there, just the banjo fixing for the two hoses. So I'm not gonna remove that, I'm just gonna nip it off and then pinch it back again, because once this whole assembly is removed, it'll be very difficult to break it loose with whatever torque setting that's on. So we'll undo that, 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 and crack that off and then we should be able to remove the system from the bike. I've also put a cloth under here because if any brake fluid does drip on the bodywork, it will take the paint off. So you just need to be a bit cautious of that. With the kits side by side, as I say, you can see the old one is more of a gloss finish and the replacement one's more of a matte. And it's slightly different in design. Obviously it's got the replacement internals more importantly than anything, but it comes with the new bracket, the new reservoir, ceiling washers, and a new nut for the lock nut on the underside. So it doesn't come with a new bolt. So I assume we're gonna to have to use that, but all new brackets as well, complete with the kit. So what we'll do, we'll swap it over, put the lever on when it's on the bike, and it comes with these 
replacement washers, but because mine runs the Hell braided lines, it uses a slightly different bolt pattern to the standard. And I've got some new copper washers to go on there as well. With the front lever put back on, you can now begin to torque everything up. So I did get these off of the Suzuki GSX-R forum, so if you have any doubt, obviously double check yourself. But I've got 10 newton meters, 10 newton meters, 10 newton meters, 7.5 newton meters, which we'll obviously use shortly when we bleed it. And then the main union underneath was 23 newton meters. And because of the access, I ended up using what's called a crow's foot to get up in there and torque it up. With the job complete, you should be looking at the old master cylinder, reservoir, some copper washers. You may have a slightly different design if you're using the standard hoses and the lock nut that goes under the lever because the new kit comes with all this. Now, as you can see, I've used the original one clamp back on there, the original bolt back on there. We've talked these all up and all the bleed nipples as well as detailed earlier. Now what I do as a final check before I say I'll finish the job is I give the lever a good couple of grabs. And while I'm doing that, I then get the torch out and look underneath and I give it one big final pull and hold it there. And the reason for that is just in case you haven't done something up or you've got something in one of the banjo washers there, it's worth just making sure it's absolutely tight. 
with uh, no leaks or anything. So the last thing you want to do is have brake failure out on the road. And obviously check all your bleed nipples are done up. Again, seven and a half newton meters according to that Suzuki thing I found online from the forum. Do double check. And again, seven and a half on there as we bled out on the top. And then just make sure the level is just below the full, as you can see there, all done. So on to the battery. So to the remove the battery, it's pretty straightforward. There's a four millimeter bolt this side, or an Allen key four millimeter bolt, sorry and another one this side. You simply undo those. The seat will then be able to just pull up from this side and there's two hooks in the back that let it slide out, which I'll show you. So with both batteries on the bench, we have the old one that I've removed from the bike, which I've had on there. It's got to be eight years plus now because it was on the bike when I bought it. And like I say, it was just nearly to the point it left me stranded and didn't start the bike a couple of weeks ago, even after being on charge. And then we have the brand new UASA unit. Now, typically, if both batteries are fully charged, you then leave them overnight, take them off the charger, give them a few hours to settle, and you should be seeing 12.5 to 12.8 volts out of a battery. So don't do it straight after it's come off charge. You need to leave it for a few hours. So this one, like I say, was charged last night. We'll just do a quick power up now. 12.3. And as I say, it would still start the bike. It would just really struggle if especially if you left the lights on or anything like that. So the brand new one, again, charged the day before, so it's been left standing even longer. 12.86, so big difference in the voltage. And like I said, it's just an early sign that the battery, unfortunately, is on the way out, which to be expected for the age. So we'll put the new one in, throw the old one away correctly, and then that'll be another job ticked off the list. So that wraps up the master cylinder replacement and the battery change as well. If you did enjoy the video, do make sure you hit the like button and consider subscribing. Until next time, thanks for watching.